Okay, now in this part we're going to have a look in depth at some of the very advanced utilities that come bundled with Windows 7. And I want to start with the event viewer. Now the event viewer uh, stores uh, information on everything that happens in Windows, although you'll see there's a little star here, there's a little caveat. Now there's going to be some events that uh, can occur on a computer where the system fails so quickly and the system shuts down or restarts so quickly that the event viewer isn't actually able to store that information. That's probably where uh, a blue screen will, will uh, come in but even uh, then the event viewer can probably store information on blue screens and you may find times when uh, the system has restarted or just stopped and that there is no information there but generally all the information you need is in the event viewer. Now you can open any event to get more information uh, about it and you'll see in the grey panel in the bottom there's a lot more information including stop error codes and uh, descriptions of errors themselves. And uh, any information in the event viewer you can export to uh, email to a support person or to read uh, later on or on another computer. Here though I want to have a look at how we can attach tasks to events because you can automatically trigger um, certain tasks to occur on an event. This could be an, an error, a driver stop or any event that you want. So let's have a look at this now. Let's have a look now at how we can attach actions to events. Now the easiest way to get into the event viewer is by typing the word event into the search box in the, in the uh, start menu and selecting event viewer from the list of programs when it appears. Now you'll see here in the list summary of administrative events in the middle it tells us for the last hour, day and week uh, how many critical error and warning events we've had along with information and successful uh, audit events. Now we'll discount critical events for the moment because a critical event will probably result in a system failure of some type that the user is likely to notice. So we'll say that we want to look at just the errors. Now we can see here we've had two in the last hour, we've had four in the last 24 hours and six in the last week. Now let's say it's this service control error that we have identified as being the source of our problem. Now this could be a problem that the user doesn't recognize and doesn't notice until later on. Say perhaps a driver has failed or a Windows service has failed or a piece of software has failed and the user doesn't notice until the next time they go to print a document, uh, attach to the company network or try and run a piece of software. But we need to know as and when that uh, event actually occurs, what is happening at that time. We need to know what software that user is running, what else they are doing on their computer to help us diagnose the problem. So we'll double click on this and this will give us more information here about this error. It'll tell us when it occurred and it will give us more information including an error code if there is one. Now you'll see here in the right hand panel there's an option here to attach a task to this event. So we'll click on this. Now we'll give the task a name so we'll say uh, we'll call it VM error, VM error 1, and uh, we'll give it a description. So we'll say an, a miss, an intermittent error with the company virtual machine. Now, there are three different tasks that we can perform here. We can start a program and we'll talk more about this um, in a little while. We can send an email, but bearing in mind that you'll need email client software like such as Microsoft Outlook installed on the computer, it won't work with uh, webmail, or we can display a message. Now we're gonna have a look here about uh, displaying a message. Now the title of the message is going to be alert, and we can put anything we want. We'll say stop whatever you're doing and call Mike at tech support straight away don't touch the keyboard further as we need information about an 
error that has just occurred. And that alert message will then appear on the user's screen when the error next occurs and every time after that as well. Now before we click finish we'll just tick this box to open the properties dialog for this task and uh, we'll have a look at some of the other options that are available. We can have the task run whether the user is logged on or not. We can change the privileges with which it runs. We can change what triggers this, ac um, this uh, action here. And we can change the actions themselves. We can add additional ones. We can have a whole series of them. We can edit them. We can delete them. And you can add these up and down the list so that actions occur one after another. So here we could say we want to start another program. Again, as I said, something we're going to look at. So when you're happy with all those settings, then we will uh, press uh, OK there. And now it says it's created the schedule task VM error one. And to modify the, uh, the task, open the task scheduler and you'll see it in there. Now, I spoke there about being able to attach uh, programs to events and start programs. And I want to talk here about a DOS command called WEVTUTIL. Now, you can use this to retrieve information from the event viewer. And you run it from the, uh, from the command prompt, as I've said. So you can use the command prompt to run uh, command.exe, cmd.exe. Um, with one of the following switches. Now there are many switches that you can uh, that you can use here, and uh, there's more information on those in a minute. But you can use the uh, forward slash c switch to carry out a command string and stop, or the forward slash k to carry out a command uh, string and then continue. Now, as I said, you can use webtutil to output system information in a file from the event viewer and there's full information on the webtutil command at this uh, bit.ly address or if you do a search online for webtutil then you'll find information on the Microsoft website but it's a very useful way of being able to output information from the event viewer itself at the time an event occurs then there's the system health report, which I'm going to look at in a little bit more depth um, in a little while. Now you can automatically run a system health report from the event viewer, and this can be uh, very useful. Now you need to be uh, familiar with uh, a PowerShell command, and you can run powershell.exe from uh, a task in the event viewer with a, a command after it. Now this is the general format of the PowerShell command that you can use to run the uh, system health report automatically when an event or an error occurs. And again with this, there's more information online either at this bit.ly address or by searching online for creating a system health report where you'll find full information and full syntax for this PowerShell command and how you actually use it if you're not familiar with PowerShell on the Microsoft website. What I'd like to do now is look at more in depth at performance information and tools. Now here we can get huge amounts of information about the computer about what's going on in uh, both live formats and um, uh, formats generally sort of archived about uh, with information about the computer. Now you can access performance information tools by typing performance or perf perhaps into the search box in the Windows 7 start menu which is the easiest way to access it but you can also access it from the control panel. Now when it opens you'll see your Windows Experience Index score information and this is the default view but in the blue panel on the left hand side of that window you'll see an advanced tools link and it's this advanced tools link that you're going to want to click on. So there's uh, four particular bits of information that uh, we can get from performance information and tools and 
Now we're going to have a live demo and I'm going to look at each one of these in depth. There's the performance monitor, the resource monitor, system information and the system health report that I mentioned a little while ago. So now we'll have our demonstration. Okay, let's have a look now at some of the advanced tools in the Performance Information and Tools panel. First one I want to have a look at is the Performance Monitor here. Now, the Performance Monitor allows us to view real-time information about what's going on with our computer. So we have a system summary here, but there's even more information available than that. If we click on the Performance Monitor link in the left-hand panel, we can see a graph that's showing us here by default a red line for the percentage of processor time that's being used. But up on the top we've got a toolbar and here we've got a green plus button so we can add all sorts of different uh, graphs to this, inf to this panel and you can see here there's a great many covering every aspect of uh, the Windows operating system. Now let's say for instance we want to look at networking. Now there are several ways to do this we can click on the network interface there and we can see all the um, information about it below and we can click add there and we can add all these network interface uh, uh, details to the panel or we can click the down arrow next to network interface and we can just say well let's let's say we want uh, bytes sent and received um, on our network connection so we'll add those so when you're ready click OK and we'll turn off the processor time and we can now see all sorts of information here in real time about what is happening in our computer and the graphs are neatly color coded and you can add as many um, uh, graphs to this as, as you want and you can just turn things on and off and uh, it's still storing the information but you can turn them on and off to view just the information that you need. So that's the performance monitor. Next is the resource monitor which is directly below it in the advanced tools. Now the resource monitor is, is kind of the big brother of the task manager which you access from um, control or delete or by right clicking on the um, right clicking on the uh, Windows 7 taskbar. There's all sorts of information here about uh, processes that are running, uh, disk information, network information, but you've also got tabs along the top for the processor, for running services, for your memory as well, for what's being written to the disk and being read from the disk and what the uh, how many bytes per second are, are being read, about disk activity there and all sorts of information about your network activity and everything has useful graphs here on the right hand panel with more information available of, available still so the resource monitor is gives much more information than the task manager about what is happening on your computer in real time and it's an incredible incredibly useful tool Next, we have the System Information Panel. Now, the System Information Panel is, is kind of like the, um, the, the SIS Sandra Utilities, but it's, it's not quite as in-depth. But it will give you an awful lot of information, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bits of information on your computer and on what's happening with your computer on the hard disk, on the hardware and the software and drivers and here we can see environment variables and this information here this can all be uh, exported um, from the the file menu and sent to a support person or read on another PC or later on this is general information about your PC so what if you want information about what's happening in your PC at that moment and want to generate a report on that well here we can generate a system health report now the system health report takes um, as it says here about 60 seconds but it cr collates all of this information that we've seen into a, uh, a single file 
which can be viewed on this computer, it can be viewed on any other computer, it can be emailed to a support person, uh, it can be it can be read later. Sometimes it's useful to be able to take a report away, walk away from a problem because you can be too close to it and sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. So sometimes it's very useful to be able to, to take a report away. So we'll just wait for this report to uh, finish um, creating and then we'll have a look at just how in-depth it really is because it is incredibly useful. Should be finished in a, just a moment. But as is always the way with these things, it takes longer than you hope. Here we are, generating the report. Now, when the report appears, we'll see that it's organized into a whole series of collapsible panels, which gives us our information here. So we've got our main system diagnostics report, our diagnostic results here, which is telling us about device drivers that are disabled here. We have our software configuration panels, and these are all uh, collapsible as well. We've got hardware, CPU, network, disk, memory, and report statistics panels, which give us all sorts of information. And there's a huge wealth of information. All the information that we've seen in those previous panels is um, included here and is a snapshot of everything going on in that computer at the time and it's a, a huge amount of information um, but because it's all in collapsible panels it's fairly easy for you to be able to go directly to the information that you want let's say we've collapsed them all let's say we want to look at disk activity here and we want to look at our physical hard disk and we want to see what's going on there so that's the system health report and again in the file menu you can print it you can send it to uh, someone if you have a uh, an email client installed on your PC such as Microsoft Outlook it wouldn't work with webmail but you can save it as a file and then that can be attached to an email later and sent to a support person so there's uh, a whole wealth of advanced tools here in performance information and tools. So that's it for this presentation on advanced Windows 7 troubleshooting. I'm Mike Halsey. There's much more information available in my book Troubleshooting Windows 7 Inside Out from Microsoft Press and you can also find further help and information on my website thelongclimb.com. Thank you for watching.